your paintings. And selling's not important. The money's not important. What's important is that somebody cares enough about what you did to give you their hard-earned happy buck. And it does good things in here. What it does in the wallet, it, it means nothing. What it does in here, though, you sell one painting and you, you immediately run home and you'll paint 25 more paintings and it forces you to practice. I talk too much. Uh, maybe there's a little cabin here. Let's put a little cabin. I like those. Maybe one of the easiest ways to paint a cabin is to take and scrape out a basic shape. Just use the knife and scrape out a general shape. Let that blue get in there and you can see it. And you can scrape out the entire cabin without being committed. See that? Just any way you want to. Now then, let's take some Van Dyke Brown. And we'll do this back eave back here. There. Just drop that right in. While I have that on there, zip, we'll go ahead and put in the front. Boy, I sure wish houses were this easy to build. Son of a gun. My father was a carpenter, contractor, did carpenter work. And I spent half my life learning how to, how to work with wood. There we go. And I can tell you that houses aren't this easy to build, for real. Okay? Now, I want a nice straight edge back here, so just take a little of the white and lay in your basic line there. And then when you come down, you'll have a beautiful straight line without any problem. That's sneaky, huh? There we go. Okay, now, the other side of this little house would have some snow laying over there. Drop that in. Okay, we'll use that color we made the tree out of. That was a nice color. I'm going to add some more yellow ochre to it. So it's dark sienna, yellow ochre. Put a little cad yellow into it too. What the heck? Don't overmix. Leave it sort of marbled. And cut off a little roll of paint. We'll go back up here. And maybe just touch and give a little sidewards pull. Just give it a little pull. There. Okay. There, touch. Give a little pull. Add a little titanium white. I want to brighten that up so it shows a little better. In your world, you make it any way you want it. There we go. I want this to look like old boards. Now on the side over here, I'm going to add a lot of Van Dyke Brown to that. Because over here, it should be much darker. Not as much light's going to strike. Now we can do a cabinectomy. Decide where you want this cabin to live. Just take your knife and cut it off. This is the way you clean up your cabin, work on your perspective, get everything together. Grab the little knife. A little touch of brown would we'll put a window right there. Zoop, that easy. Hope you can see that. There's a little window there. I tell you what, maybe over here there's a little shed. We'll just scratch out a little area for the top. Come back in here. Put a little snow out there. Like that. Come right back with some brown. And we can just lay in the front of the shed. There's the side. Take a little bit of our color. Lay in a few little happy boards here. This is just a tiny shed. And we'll cut it off here in just a second. See there? Now decide where you want it. And do a, as I said earlier, you just do a cabinectomy. There. And let's put a door right there. It's that easy. And we have a little door. Take a little paint, go around the door so it stands out. And we're in business. And we shake them off and in business again. Let's build us a big mountain today. For that, I'll tell you what. Let's really get crazy. I'm going to take some black. Black. We'll use a lizard and crimson. And maybe, maybe a little of the dark sienna. What the heck? There. That'll make us a nice color. Least little touch of blue in it. Not much. Very little blue. Very little blue. Cut us off a little roll of paint. It's right out there on the edge of the knife. Come right up in here. I want to do a huge mountain today. Let's begin pushing in. Some nice shapes here. Nice shapes. However you want it out. Now, 
Now, you have to be careful, because when you start making these mountains, these son of a guns will grow on you and take over your whole world. It gets to be fun, and, and you, don't, you don't know when to stop. You can just absolutely eat up your whole canvas for the mountain. All right, maybe. Oh, I don't know. Maybe this just comes right over. Hmm. Well, I, I did say big mountain today, so we, we really have a large one. We can spend the whole show just working on this one mountain. And at home, when you have unlimited time, do exactly that. Spend a lot of time working on one mountain or one area of your painting, especially when you're first learning, because that's the way you learn. And as I've mentioned before, if you make a mistake, don't get angry about it. Look at your mistake. I believe sincerely that you can learn as much from mistakes, if not more, than you do from successes. And it's not a failure if you learn from it. It's not a failure. It's only a failure if you don't learn anything from it. Then it's a failure. And it's the same, I think, in your everyday life. Anything that you try and you don't succeed, if you learn from it, it's not a failure. Now, if you make the same mistake again, different story. Here we're just blending that out and and allowing it to, allowing it to blend with a liquid white that's on the canvas, and just create that illusion of mist down at the base. That's all we're looking for at this point. Whew, boy, you really did come out with a big mountain. Okay, it's a good place to just sort of clean off the brush there. We'll just cover the whole bottom down here. Maybe we'll have some snow down here. And this, this will end up being shadows in the snow. Doesn't matter. Whatever you want. Okay. Now it's time to have fun. Let's take, let's take titanium white. And I'll put a little Indian yellow and a little bit of yellow ochre in there. Mix them together with white. But I don't want to over mix them. I want to leave them sort of marbledy. I'm sure I'm going to get a letter from an English teacher for that word. But see how marbledy it is right in here. But what I'm saying is don't overmix the color. And then when you pick up that little roll of paint right out here on the edge of your knife, all of those various colors are right here on the knife. Now then, see, you can come right along in here and touch and just let that slide right off the knife. But no pressure, absolutely no pressure. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. And maybe, let's come right along here, touch. Just let it go. Let it just slide right along there. But if you start applying a lot of pressure, it's going to look like you're trying to ice a cake. <laughs> and it may look it may look good to the taste, but it's not going to look like a mountain probably that you wanted. Watch here. Maybe right there. Just pull it down a little. Something like so. I'm going to make a shadow color. We'll use white and black. Least, least little touch of blue in it. A little dark with a little more white with it. Oh, that's nice. But sort of a blue-gray we'll use for a shadow color. Take the small edge of the knife, and we'll come right here. Put a little shadow right up here on that, that little peak. That little peak needs a little shadow. Then, now we can bring this one. Let's just bring it distinctly right on through there. See, that'll push that one way back somewhere. We don't even know where it's at. I don't know that we even care. It's way back behind there. There. And you learn to push mountains around. Just push them around. Take the least little touch of the light color. Don't want much. Let a little light zing back in here. Just enough to make it interesting. Little touch of the shadow. I we'll let that come right through and make like a little recessed area in there. One of them little little hiding places for the little creatures. There. But just sort of play these back and forth. Let them go. There we are. But it's unbelievable the kind of mountains you can make. Just using the thing, it looks like a big old putty knife. And if that don't work, you can go out and work on your windows with a putty knife. <laughs> Whatever. There. Let's take back to our little shadow color. 
And I'm going to bring it right through here. I want a, a nice shadow right through that area. But pay close attention to angles. Angles are really what make what makes mountains work. It's just those nice angles. Now then, this is this painting should just about be a study in mountains. Look at there. Now we bring that right on down. No pressure. I can't say that enough times. Probably that's still the number one thing I, I read in letters is I'm having trouble making this highlight or snow or whatever you want to call it break on the mountains here. And 99 times out of 100, it's one of two things. Either the paint is too thin and it's turning to mud, or you're applying too much pressure. One or the other, though, 99 times out of 100. There we go. Now we can just bring this along, put all kind of little things. Back to our shadow color. Can grab that. Begin putting in just the indication of some beautiful little shadows back in here. There we are. Just let it flow right on down. Well, something like so. And maybe a little bit back in here. Just a little. See it? There we are. Little tiny shadow. And that one comes distinctly through. See, I push that one back. Okay. Maybe a little dark color here and there. Just to brighten it. Believe it or not, that dark, though, will make it jump out at you. But don't overdo. Don't overkill. It's like so many other things. It, it gets feeling good, and you, and you don't know when to stop. I have that trouble all the time. There. I get carried away. And it's easy to get carried away when it starts working well. All right. Now, let's play some games. Let's have some fun. We'll take a old two-inch brush. Create the illusion of a little mist right here at the base of this and blend upward. Just tap, just tap, and then blend it upward. Upward, upward, upward. That removes the tap marks, blends it all together, makes it very soft and very nice. Okay, a little bit right in here. Now, let's take the same color, but because we've misted that, then you can bring maybe another projection right off this direction. There we go. Just let that go right on around. Maybe there's a... Look at that. There we are. That's what we need. And you just begin seeing these things in your mountain. There, there. Just start, just start working on it. Let it go. See what happens. Let me mix up a little more shadow color here. A little touch of the blue in it. Just ran out. the old knife. We're back in business again. Okay. And let a little of it just run right out this way. Let's build a barn. Now, when you do this, probably one of the easiest ways I've found is to take your knife and very gently scrape out a basic shape. This allows you to get your perspective right, but most important, it takes off the paint that you already have on the canvas and the next layer sticks much easier. So let's go right here. See, I just use a point. Maybe you can see that, but yeah, you can see that quite well. There we go. See, we'll come down maybe here. Here's the other part, it comes out like so. And you're not committed yet. This is just giving you an idea. Maybe there's an arm that lives right over here on this barn. We'll put an arm over here, comes across sorta. Look at there. See, that gives you a general shape. Now with a knife, with a knife, I'm just going to tear out, rip it out. All the beautiful things we had back here. There they go. There they go. I think today I'll show you a different way to, to paint a barn. This is an old barn. It has old wood on it. Get all this color out. I'm going to put some snow on the roof and we don't, we don't want it to... Huh. You know about that yellow snow? I don't want that up there. Okay. There. I know that looks terrible. 
you're probably sitting at home saying, Bob, you have, you have done it this time. Use a two inch brush, I'm going right into the Van Dyke Brown. Load the brush full of color. Give it a wiggle and pull it. That brings it to a nice sharp edge. Look, at, look how sharp that brush is. It's very sharp. Good, let's go up here. All right, let's start with the overhang. There it is. See there? Now you could do all of this that I'm gonna do with your knife. I just wanna show you a different way of doing it. Grab this, pull it down, pull down. Use both sides, because the other side's fully loaded, too. Here we go, over here. Look at that. That quick, that quick. There. He's going to have a little arm out there. We need to put some wood out there. Got a little arm on the other side. Put some brown in there. And you're really, you're really still not too committed. You can still change your mind here. Let's go up the side. See there? Right up the side. Like that. Maybe, maybe, yeah, I'm going to have a little bit of wood showing right in here. All right, now, I want to make this look like old wood. Old, old wood. Now, I'm going to use the same old brush, and I'm going to go right into some white, some of the dark sienna. Just, and I'm just, look at the brush. There, let's go up to the canvas. Now, start right here, touch, no pressure, no pressure, no pressure, no pressure. See there? Isn't that super? Helps if you're a little nervous. If your hand shakes a little bit, this is the time to use it. There, because it makes all these beautiful little wood effects. There we go. Now we need some on the other side. Mm. Ooh, there's a pretty one happening right there. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I get carried away sometime just watching. There we go, let's put some right out in here. Okay, now over here, I'll just put a little indication. Not much of that's gonna show. Now we can go back into the brown, and I wanna put some shadows in here. And we're just barely touching. Barely touching. This is when we find out if you have a delicate touch. All right, now back to my knife. Go right into the Van Dyke Brown, cut me off a little. And let's put us some indication of a few boards in here. And I'm just gonna quickly do this so you can see how it's done. Do, 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 do. Just let them go. And you put as many boards in yours as you want. This carpenter is like me. He wasn't too good. He just, whatever he had, he used. Over here, it's a few. There we go. Now with a clean brush, a very light touch. Grab this and just caress it. Look at that. Bring all this together. Have you ever seen an easier, nicer way to make old boards? Now, now we can get serious. First thing we need here is a door. Got to have a place to put the cow. There, we got a barn, got to have a way for him to get in. There we go. Nice door. And, and tell you what, put some snow right up here on this little arm. Some snow right along here. Just, just lay it on. And go come right down here. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. Choop. See there? And that gives us an idea of how to do a roof. I tell you what, I'm just going to sort of block this in so you can see it a little easier when you set. It's also a nice way to cheat a little and give yourself a guide. Touch, just pull down. Just give it a little pull, a little pull, like so. There you go. Okay, now, right out here. Look here, look here, look here. A little more. There it is. Just take your knife, smooth it out. And then a sneaky way to make a barn. Okay, now I'm gonna take the little knife here. I wanna put some curves in this door. It's just the right size for that. And pull that down. There. And a little bit of light brown color, and we'll 
Just sort of outline it, give it a touch of highlight so it stands out a little better. A little bit better. This old barn's seen its better day. It's, it's like me, it's had a rough life. Now then we can take and begin working on some of the perspective here and get all this stuff together. Maybe it comes right up through there. All right, all right, we're ready to have some fun. I'm gonna go back into some of these dark colors, brown. Let's take, maybe right in here, there's a nice little cabin. We'll take some Van Dyke brown and we'll begin building on our cabin, maybe right there. Just make a decision, drop it in. And we do the back eave of the cabin first, part farthest away from you. Just like so. Now on this side, I'm gonna use white with a little bit of the gray color in it. Just enough to dull it down. We don't want it too bright. And we'll just start here and pull down. Just like so. You can lay out your basic shape of your cabin and then fill it in. Now, over on this side of the roof, we need a little bit of snow over there. Okay. And we can come in here and put some boards right here. Just pulling straight down here. There we go. Isn't that a super way to make a little cabin? And all buildings work basically the same. It's just a matter of angles and perspective. If we had shows that were a little bit longer, gosh, I'd love to show you some fantastic buildings. There we go. Now maybe we want to turn this into a maybe like a log cabin, so we can take some brown and some white. Maybe we'll put a tiny bit of umber into it, burn umber. Want to keep it quite dark. We don't want it to get too bright yet. And just touch, give it a little pull, just to make it look like little, little logs there. There we go. Just touch and sort of pull. Get it too bright. There we go. Okay, now we can go sort of in the opposite direction and put some logs going this way. And all we do is touch, sort of give it a little downward pull this time. Just a little. Don't overdo. And just work right across in layers. and sort of give you the impression of little logs. Now, when you're at home and you have unlimited time, you could take your little liner brush and really put some detail in there. As I've said before, if we run over 30 minutes here, they, they yell at me a lot and kick me off the set. So we'll try to keep it very simple just to give you some ideas. All we want to do is give you ideas and teach you how to do this fantastic method and, and turn you loose on the world. Now, I want this side to be a little darker over here, maybe. <clears throat> now, if the old fellow that lived here is like the rest of us, he probably, probably ran out of space very quick and had to build a little shed on his cabin. So maybe we should do that, too. I'll take a little bit more of the brown, and let's come right in here and build him a shed. We'll just put a little little roof right here, coming out like so. Maybe this is where he keeps his firewood, because undoubtedly this is cold. Now we need a little bit of snow on the roof, so we just take a little of the titanium white and just come across there. Just like so. There we are. Now, 
Out here in the foreground, a little bit more brown. Need to put some walls on his little shed. Maybe over here. Just there. Good, good. Maybe these are boards here. Maybe these aren't logs. Maybe these are slabs. So we'll just put some indication of some boards here and there. Okay. Now, let's go right up in here and give him a couple of windows. Maybe he needs some windows. Well, we're looking at the back of his cabin. So first we'll take out this paint that we have up here. And let's go right into a little bit of uh, cad yellow. He'll just put some light in his window. Just give him some light. Maybe he's got the old lantern on tonight if there's no electricity out here in the woods. And we'll take a little bit of the magic black on the liner brush and then just sort of outline the windows. Just a tiny bit. This is a very thin paint, it's a liquid, so it flows. Okay, now, now we need some more snow in there. There, we can just start right here and begin bringing the snow right on down. And angles are very, very important when you're doing snow. Start right up in here. Just let it come right on through. There. Okay. Hmm. Isn't that fun? This magic black is so exciting. There's so many things that can be done with it. Maybe in our next series, we'll devote several shows to using the magic black and show you how it works. Now, if you want to soften this snow a little bit, it's very bright right now, you can take the large brush and be very careful and follow the angles and just gently, gently, gently rub it. And you can blend it right into whatever degree of brightness or darkness that you want. Always follow the angles, though. Okay. Maybe we need a little... Maybe there's a little chimney right here. We'll just throw it on. Just use a little bit of the gray color and the small edge of the knife. There we are. Maybe you can see the least little amount of red on his chimney. And we won't have a fire going right now. Okay, make the snow a little bit thicker on the roof. And I think we're ready to, ready to start playing with some other things. Now I'm gonna take a fan brush and start out loading it with titanium white with some Van Dyke Brown. Let me clean off a spot to work here. Take Van Dyke Brown. And maybe today we can, let's get a close up of what the knife looks like when it's loaded. There's a small roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. There, you see that roll of paint? That's what we work with. Okay, now let's take and let's put a big tree right up through here. All we're going to do is touch the canvas. Just touch it. The roll of paint just, just comes off and makes your tree for you. Okay, we'll just let this one go right on up. Okay, got one side done. Now let's do the other side of the tree. There we are. And just keep going there. 
And you can make as many trees as you want in your painting. That's what's so nice about painting. You create your own world and you control it. You can make anything happen in your world that you want. I'm give him some roots down here. I'm gonna have something for him to stand up on. And maybe, maybe he's got a nice arm right here. A little limb that just goes right on off the canvas. be able to see the beginning of another one over here somewhere. And just put them where you think they should be. Okay, now let's go into a little bit of the gray and white. Just a little bit. And let's lay a little bit of highlight right along here. Just to make this tree stand out a little better. Just follow right on up the tree. And let it go. A little bit of light shining on it. I want to keep this painting very dark to give the impression of night. Now this tree is, is very thick. When it's dry, you can feel the bark on it. It'll have dimension. Maybe there's a little highlight right there. A little touch here and there. I knew you could do it. And down here at the bottom, maybe there's a little snow that's sort of piled up on his, on his little foots. There we are. We'll use some midnight black. Take a big bunch of black and throw it out here. And to that, I'm going to add a lizard and crimson. Black and a lizard crimson. Now then, you can put a little white over there and, and check it out, see what color it is, because it's hard to tell. I want a little more crimson than that. I want it a little more to the reddish side. Okay, that's better, like that. Okay, pull the paint out very flat, cut across, and get our little roll of paint. See, it's right out on the edge of the knife, okay? Now then, if we're going to have a big old mountain here, let's just decide where this big old mountain lives and just begin dropping it in. And we'll start this one like we start most mountains, very firmly pushing in our basic shape. Maybe there's a big high peak on this one that lives up here in the sky. That's where that big eagle sits. Okay, a little bump there maybe, and another little bump, wherever you want them. Push very firmly. You're really trying to push this right into the fabric. This old canvas is tough, but don't worry about hurting it. You're not going to hurt it. Then push it in there and scrape off the excess. And we'll take a large brush and we'll pull this just like we do normally. Just like we normally do. And blend it down. There. See, grab over here and pull it. There. And just let this move right on out. Because the liquid white's on the canvas, you can literally, literally move this paint. If you were working on a dry canvas, whew, you'd be in Agony City. Okay, wash my old brush. Give him a little shake. Cover a couple of camera people. And we're in business. Now then, I think today, for this, I'll use a small knife. You could use either knife, doesn't matter. I'll just use a small one to pull that paint out as flat as you can get it, as usual. Cut across, and we have our little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. Now, normally we take this touch and we just pull, okay? But today, watch, all I'm gonna do is touch and just let it bounce, see? I'm just touchy, 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 all right on down. So you don't have to worry, it breaks automatically, and then you can sort of, you don't want it too even and smooth here, so just touch to break it up. Now, isn't that simple? If you've ever had trouble making the snow break on the mountain, this is an easy one. This one will work for you. There we go. And just sort of follow the angles like you normally do. 
just touching. All you have to do is touch. The canvas will take off what it wants and give you back what's left. There. But you still have to follow the basic angles. Still have to follow those. No matter how you make this mountain, light's still going to strike in a given direction. If light's coming from here, then it's just going to zing right across there. See, maybe there's a little projection out here. Maybe another one over here. Wherever you want it. All you have to do is just touch the canvas. Maybe it comes right on the rim. Wherever, wherever. Okay, and maybe there's some light that strikes us up here. See, all you're doing though is touching the canvas. Isn't that neat? Maybe this comes right on around. There's a little valley in there. There. And just let it go. Let it go. Just sort of let your imagination take you where you want to be. Okay, now there's another one over here. Shoot, maybe this one over here comes right on around like so. And just sort of moves right on down. See there? You can just wrap it right around. Isn't that fantastic? I knew you'd like this. Now if you prefer just to drag it and make the snow break, then you can make this mountain the same way as you've been making them. I just really want to show you something a little bit different. And in, in case you've had any problem, you probably haven't, but some people have. This will, this will help you. Now I'll take some thalo blue and white. We'll just sort of mix that together. I'm looking for a sort of a shadow color here. Just blue and white. Same thing, cut across and we'll get our little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife. Now we can come back in here, and now then, we begin looking for the shadows the same way. Just barely touching. Allow the canvas to pull off what it wants. Just follow the basic shapes. Like that. All of the principles and the rules are the same as the, the way we've been making mountains if you've painted with me before. This is just done by just tapping. It's also, you know, like in Arizona, New Mexico, they have the mountains that have all the different colors in them. This is a super way to make those. Super, super way, because you can create all those little colors just by touching the canvas. Next time, maybe I'll do one of those. I have a lot of friends in that area. There we go. Just follow the basic angles, and all you're doing, really, is just touching the canvas. Because you have a thick paint on the canvas, it'll literally grab that and pull it right off. And you can do anything that you want to do there. Okay, maybe all down in here. There. Got to mix up a little bit more of the shadow color. I didn't mix enough. So same thing, a little blue and white. Just mix it together. Cut across our little roll of paint again. Always that little roll of paint. So helpful if you'll load the knife correctly. And then we can bring this in here and just begin tapping. Like so. Okay. See, and you can sort of vary those angles so it looks like it's laying flatter or setting up higher, however you want it. There. You just keep this going all day. Cover up the whole canvas with it, and that's all right. That's a super way to learn. And any time you learn, your time and energy is not wasted. It's not wasted. There. And as long as we live, Hopefully we'll continue to learn there. Can you see there? Now then we can put some shadows under this little highlight. And a little more of the white. And we can begin. Let's just bring this right on down. Sort of let all that come together. There we go. 
But once again, if you've had any problem making the snow break on the mountains the way we've been making, I hope you give this a try because I, I really believe you'll have instant success with this. Even if you've never painted a mountain before, the big thing is to pay strict attention to the angles. Look at the angles in this mountain. The rules are basically the same no matter how you make your mountain. You have highlight on one side and shadow on the other. As simple as that sounds, sometimes we get, we get a little confused. Now I'm going to tap just the base of this. I'm going to create a little mist, not much, and then very lightly. Oh, just the least little amount. Least little amount here. There we go. Just sort of blend all of that together. So it's very soft. Now that's just a real quick little mountain. Think what you can do at home when you have unlimited time, where you can make a son of a gun of a mountain. Now then, okay, let's do another one here. We'll use it. We just take that same old color we had, our original mountain color, pull it out flat, cut a roll of paint off. One more time, same old roll. Okay, maybe, maybe there lives. Let's get crazy. Maybe right up here. Mmm, gotta make a little noise so it don't work. Maybe there's a big old thing that comes right down like that, right in front of this one. See, just drop it in. Really push that color in. There. That's scary after you work so hard on your mountain and you throw that in there. That's all there is to it. All we're doing here is just blocking in color. You could you could do this with a paint roller. <laughs> we'll start a whole new style of painting, uh, paint rollers. There we go. And now then, on this one, I'm going back to the small knife. I'm going to go right back into my phthalo blue and white mixture. We'll just continue to use it. What the heck? Now, let's just take our little roll of paint again, and let's just begin on this one. It's just laying in the indication here, just tapping, of just, let's let it bounce right along, of just a few little shadow areas. Just wherever you think light would play through here, just barely touching. Just sort of let it bounce and play. No pressure at all. Oh, you, just, you just allow it to graze and touch the canvas. There. And you can do this in a multitude of different colors and make it look like rocks and stones that live in your area. Because all over the country, mountains and boulders and stuff, they look a little different. But all we're doing is just touching the canvas. It's that easy. I'm excited about this because it works so well. I've tried it with people who have never painted, not the first stroke and they've, they've made it work. And that's nice. I like to see the sparkle come in people's eye when they, when they painted their first picture and it works for them and it's, oh, it does good things in here. Just like if you've, if you've never taught other people to paint, if you know how, you don't understand how selfish it really is because the teacher gets more out of it probably than the pupil. That's the reason for years and years I traveled and taught. It was one of the most rewarding and satisfying things that I'd ever done. I met so many super people. Get off my soapbox and paint. Use some black and some blue, brown, crimson, a little sap green. Mix all that up. Now I'm going to pull a little bit of it out here. And to that we'll add, let me just grab some white. And a little more sap green in there. I'm looking for a dirty green color. There, it's coming along. There we are, it's a nice old green color. Okay, let me clean my knife off. All building back here. And we'll start with some Van Dyke Brown. A little roll of paint on the knife. And let's go right up here. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a happy little building right here. A little shed or something. We'll put it in first and 
Then we'll come back and do a big old barn. One of my best friends was telling me about a saying they have here in Indiana. They talk about the barn built the house, and I didn't understand that at first. And you can look at the size of the house and the barn and see how how well the, the old farmer is doing. If he's doing real well, and he's got a big barn and big house. Okay, now we need some put a front on that old building. Just this is just Van Dyke Brown, and all you're doing is just just laying in base color right now. You could really care less. This is strictly, strictly just base color, and then we'll come back and begin adding detail. Okay, now then, we gotta make some decisions, some big decisions. Take Van Dyke Brown, and we'll put some permanent red into it, like so, and just blend that together. Now, cut across it, and let's go right up here, and we'll just put this is old wood. I like old wood. Very rarely do I paint new buildings. I like old buildings. Now this is where you begin making all those decisions and bringing all this together. You also have to decide where is your light coming from? Where is your light coming from in your world? Maybe today we'll have it coming from the left so the front of the buildings will be lit. So I'm going to take the same color, add a little white to it, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. So now we've got Van Dyke Brown, a little yellow ochre, a little white, and a little permanent red. Let's go back up here. Now, touch very lightly, very lightly. Oh, very lightly. Just barely caressing the canvas. And that's enough. That's enough. Now I'm going to take some blue and Prussian, Prussian blue and Van Dyke Brown, mix those together, make a very dark color. Should look black. And right under this eave here, I want a little bit of dark. And under this eave, a little dark. And you just barely lay this on, too, like so. Then I'll just take a clean knife and touch that and lightly pull down. And it creates a shadow under these overhangs. That easy. Okay. Now we need some, need some roof up here. I'm going to use Van Dyke Brown, permanent red. This eve, just some, just sort of outline it a little bit. Okay, now all I'm going to do here is just sort of touch, let the paint, just let the paint be pulled off onto the canvas. Canvas will pull off what it wants, give you back what's left. There we go, old old roof. There's shingles missing and shingles broke. Looks like me, it's had a hard life. Now we need a we need a door in this building. There we go. Just come across. Maybe it's like that. This is just the dark color. We don't care what color it is, as long as it's dark. Maybe maybe this building was maybe it was made out of boards. So I'll just take a small amount of white, cut across it, and we'll put some indication of some little boards here and there. This is your building, so you have to make these decisions. And just a few little indications over here. I don't want too many over here. Just like so. And a little bit around the door where the light's striking, make it stand out. Yeah, that simple. We've got a happy little building. Now then, I'm going to mix up Van Dyke Brown, Permanent Red, and Prussian Blue. And we'll just mix them all together here. And we're going to use quite a bit of this, so I'll mix up a pretty good-sized pile. There we go. Just like that. All right. I'm going to wipe my knife here on just, just paper towels or clean rag, whatever you have. I would take this little brush, and we'll begin dropping in what will end up being some nice little grassy areas. Maybe, maybe they're not taking too good a care of this, this old barn. It's an old barn. The weeds are beginning to sneak in there and take it. There we go. 
all we're doing is just dropping in some dark color so our lights will show when we come back and put light color in there. And that mixes with the magic white and automatically gets lighter in value. Hmm, okay. Now, a lot of times as I drive around here in Indiana, seal barns and they have, I don't really know what they are, but they have sticks or poles that sort of project up. Maybe there's one in right there. This is where they hook their antenna so they can pick up our show. A little bit of highlight. Now we said the light was coming from the left, so it'll be on that side. There we go. And that's just a little brown and white. I'll put the least little bit right there, like that. Okay, let's have a let's have a big old barn. Now a lot of times it really helps if you come up here and you sort of scrape out a basic shape. Maybe the old barn, the top of it's here, it comes down, it's got a bend. Here, bends, and comes over here. This is a super easy way to lay out your basic shape. It also will help you to remove this excess paint. Especially if that paint's thin, because we're going to put a thick color over the top of it. Okay. Tell you what, let's get crazy. Maybe it comes over here and comes right in front of that one a little bit. That'll, that'll help push that one back. All right, what color do we want the roof? Let's use some brown and some white. I'll put a little bit of blue into that. And we'll lighten that down into a couple of values. There we go. Very nice. Let's go up here. Let's start up here on the roof. Now, when you're doing buildings, when you're looking at a three-quarter view, and it's a three-quarter view if you can see the front and the side of the building. That's a three-quarter view. One of the big things to remember, the back of this building has to be a little tiny bit lower than the front. That's so, so important. So important, and it's one of the easiest things to overlook. Try to remember that. People will look at your painting, and they might not understand what's wrong, but they'll say something's wrong with that painting. And they may not understand what, but their mind will tell them something's wrong with it. And that's usually all it is, is that little angle. And it's such a simple little thing that we, we have a tendency to overlook it sometime. Okay. Now, right here, it, it bends. It's a big old bend in the roof, and it comes down like that. Just let it go down. Angles are very, very important. There we go. Just like so. Okay, now then, let's pick up some of this brown that we made. This is Van Dyke brown, permanent red, little Prussian blue. And let's begin putting in some overhangs. Barns need overhangs, too. There. See, that's so, that's so the cow has a place to stand when it's raining so he won't get wet. Once again, all we're doing now is just laying in dark color. You need the dark in order for the light to show. You need the dark. Painting is a great deal like life. You need a little dark in your life so that you know when the good stuff happens. There. And we've all had that. And we'll all continue to have it. That's what makes it all worthwhile. And the very fact that you're aware of it is enough reason to be overjoyed that you that you're alive and can experience it. Just think if you were a stone, you'd never get to enjoy anything. This we're so fortunate. Building us a fantastic barn here. Big old barn. There. Now we need to put some highlights in this barn. 
permanent red, permanent red, and right into some Van Dyke brown. We'll make this a nice reddish color brown. We'll do a red looking bar in here. Touch, very lightly, very lightly. Caress the canvas, caress it. There we go, just caress it. Okay, now over here, this side's gonna be darker, so we can use the same color and add more brown to it. Brown is your duller, it makes, it makes colors much duller. Okay, now then, touch, and just pull down. Let the paint break. Just let it break. Look at that. It looks like old wood already, and you haven't already done a thing. It's unbelievable what you can do. Now then, just like in the other one, we need some shadows. So I'll use a little bit of this dark. That was Prussian blue and Van Dyke brown. Just like so. Just lay it on first. So it makes up a little more. Russian blue and Van Dyke brown. And right into this overhang here. We need that dark. It sort of sets everything off. It makes it look so much better. Now, clean the knife. Touch. Just pull it down a little bit. Don't want to kill it all. There. Maybe. 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 Maybe there's right across here. We'll touch again with the dark color. And I'm going to grab that and pull down, just pull it straight down. So it looks like there's a division there. Now we'll go right into a little bit of light color and we'll put some happy little boards right in there. And all I'm doing is just cutting right through a little bit of color on the knife, just to give an indication of some old barn boards. If you can find an old barn in your neighborhood that the farmer didn't want anymore, these old boards make some of the most beautiful beautiful picture frames you've ever seen. Try it. And they're easy to make. Okay, now we need we need a place up here so that the old farmer could pull his hay up and put it up in there. Okay. And right here, we'll have a big door. This is just blue and brown, just a dark color. Big door, big door. And then around the edge of the door, a little bit of light strikes. Makes that door stand out. We'll put a little bit right around here, too, just to make it stand out a little. Okay, we'll have some little indication of some boards here. Don't want it to be left out. There we go. Just drop them in. There. Now, if this doesn't stand apart enough, take a little dark color there needs to be a division between the front and the side. Take a little dark color and put in there. There. And that'll help separate it. Just like so. Okay. I think we're ready to play a little more now. Maybe. 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 The fence goes up there and then over. I'm just doing this so you can see how you make a fence move all around. Da -da 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 -da. Be brave, be brave. Drop them in, drop them in. Maybe it comes right down like that. Okay, let's put one more little one right there so it goes around right on the other side. Now we need to highlight these. So I'll take some white and a little bit of light brown. And all I'm going to do is just, just touch. Just touch. So you have a little, little bit of highlight on these posts. Do, 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 do. There we are. Now we need some rails. So we'll just use the same old brown color. And all I'm going to do is just touch. And this old farmer, he's like me. He just picked up whatever happened to be laying around, and he made him a fence out of it. Now here, we want it to go uphill. See? Bloop. Bloop. See how you can bend fences right around in your painting? And fences help add a lot of depth and a lot of perspective to your painting. Use them. And they're fun. They're easy. And, of course, we're not interested in those happy bucks. But if you ever want to sell a painting, fence adds a lot of interest. Okay, maybe, maybe I'll tell you what, maybe there was a little fence right over here. So just a quick little indication like that. 
And in here, I'm just going to rub. Let's let that color rub so it looks like a little path. And we're just, we're just mixing all the colors on the canvas. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe this was where the horsey lived right here. And so the fence comes right on up. And you just let your fence go wherever you want it to go. But as it gets closer to you, it needs to get bigger. And these posts need to get a little bit farther apart. And just let them get closer and bigger and stronger. That's where this old knife is so fantastic. It really makes beautiful, beautiful fences. Okay, a little highlight on these fences. Bloop, bloop, bloop. I'm just using a little brown and white touch of blue in it. Just barely, barely touching. And don't want to cover up all the dark. Just a little. Now, while I've got that color on the knife, I'm going to add a tiniest little bit of highlight here and there on these little rails. And you could also, also make these rails using your liner brush. They work. Tell you what, a little top on those. I'm just using a little touch of permanent red here. Do 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 do. There we go. Now our back to our brown, and we'll put some rails coming right up through here. Touch, touch. There they go. Just. I say this old farmer, he just used whatever he could find laying around, limbs and sticks and trees that fell down in his backyard. You use what nature gives you, and nature gives you everything you need. See there, there it comes. And when you're at home, maybe you want three rails on your fence, or four, or, or maybe half of them fell off. You have to make these decisions. That's what makes it fun. It's because it's your world. You create what you want. Now then, a little highlight up here on these rails. But you can see how this little fence adds a lot of depth to the painting, changes your whole perspective. And it's really a lot of fun. Gives you a lot of practice with this almighty knife. I'll tell you what, let's do. Let's go back into our big brush a little more of this yellow color and we'll just put some little grassy things this is yellow add a little yellow ochre and all we're going to do here is just touch and let these little things happen like so see we got our little path now you need to you need to bring some grassy areas right on down into your path cover up the foots of these and if you pick up a little of that dark it's fine i'm going to take a liner brush a little paint thinner, go right into some brown paint. And here and there, you know, you never get the grass cut good around the bottom of the fence, so there's always weeds here and there. Wherever you want them, just grab them, lift up. Tell you what, let's take a little bit of thin oil, a little permanent red, sign this one, and call it finished. I really hope you've enjoyed this one and it's sparked your imagination and you've got your canvas out and you're ready to go. And with that, we wish you happy painting. God bless.